thank everyone who's here today. Of course, my first thanks come to all you guys who have always been so supportive and um, are a very important symbol of trust and confidence in what we have been uh, doing to uh, try to transition the economy uh, from pre-pandemic to post-pandemic, post-Ukraine economy. And uh, uh, a central part of that has always been my continuing remind reminder to people that we, uh, the government, cannot do this alone. And the partnerships that we create, that we will need a strong partnership with the private sector. And your being here uh, and in the past and being so supportive is a, is, is, is a primary element, the most important element uh, for that to succeed. I'd like to also to thank, of course, Mr. Chipman and Mr. Rahman for sharing your thoughts with us on the on really a rather intriguing question, which is uh, uh, perfect for the times. Will geopolitics finally kill off globalization? Uh, well, it's it, it, it is something that uh, really needs to be thought about uh, because there are such contrary forces that we feel uh, in both in the geopolitical sector, in the geopolitical sphere, but also in the economic slash trade sphere. Now, I think what the pandemic, what happened, especially, I'll, I'll use the, the Philippines as an example, is that what happened during the pandemic is that we were brought back uh, uh, with a hard thud to basics. And, and so we have, uh, we have uh, decided that we have to uh, strengthen our own local economy to be able to withstand shocks such as the pandemic, such as Ukraine in the future. And there is an element, and there is a tendency of protectionism in that, uh, because we take care first of our own businesses. We take care first of our own industries. We take care first of our own economy. But uh, again, but there is the contrary force to that, is that the very clear understanding and assumption by everyone who thinks about these things the trade is the key to wealth uh, for any country. No country grew wealthy uh, without a very strong trade relationship, not only with one or two other countries, but with the rest of the world. In terms of geopolitics, uh, your remarks, Mr. Chipman, in that we all desire, especially, let us say, around the South China Sea, we all desire a more multipolar. However, the forces of us going back to that uh, uh, Cold War type of scenario where you have to choose one side or the other are strong. And when I speak to the other ASEAN APEC members and the other leaders and I ask them and they ask me, do you feel it uh, that you must choose? And I say, yes, don't you? And unanimously they say yes. So the multilateralism that ASEAN uh, ASEAN, what we call the ASEAN centrality, that has, that has become a very important concept. I think uh, we are determined uh, as a group in ASEAN in, uh, and uh, in the Indo-Pacific, uh, those around the Indo-Pacific, uh, despite all of this conflict, we are determined uh, to stay away from, from that. And simply because we are anchored in the idea that the future of the Indo-Pacific, the future of Asia-Pacific, for example, cannot be determined by anyone but the countries of the Asia-Pacific. And that removes us immediately from that idea that you must choose. We choose our friends. We choose our neighbors. That's the choice that we have made. Uh, and, so, and so, although there are, the, because of these crises, the pandemic, uh, the Ukraine situation, because of this crisis, there have been tendencies, as I said, to be to, towards nationalism, towards uh, closing borders, towards uh, protectionism. But I think that technology has taken us too far. We cannot go back. And in both the global arena and in, in terms of politics, the, glo the, the geopolitics of it, and in terms of uh, the economy, the global economy, it is, it is now conceptually impossible to even think that we could have a non-global economy, that we will return to what we were 200 years ago. 
a hundred years ago. Uh, that simply is not going to happen. And so although we have, I think, hit a very big bump on the road, several big bumps on the road, I think the tendency after a while, after things have settled, after countries such as the Philippines have put in place uh, the elements of policy, the elements of legislation that are necessary to be able to adjust to what is the new coming economy. Uh, once that is in place, I think that the globalization will start. We will start to return to the tendency of globalization. I really would like love to discuss this further with you because it's a terribly interesting subject. It's critical to the future of uh, our, our planet. Uh, so thank you very much again for, those, uh, uh, for, for sharing those thoughts with us. So thank you all very much for coming to this lunch. As I said, it's been a very productive one. Uh, and I look forward now to the formal opening of the uh, forum uh, so that uh, we can uh, go further into these subjects that are very, very important to all of us. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. At yan ang bagong balita sa bagong umaga ng bagong Pilipinas. Ito po si Leon D.C. At ito ang World News Report. Rewind. React. Respa. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click notification bell for more updates.